About seven years ago, Green Bay, you may remember, had an incident involving a freighter. On July 16th, 2017, the K.E. Barker at over 700 feet was traveling on the Fox River when it collided with and damaged several docks at Green Bay's city deck. Also taking damage was a fishing boat and maintenance walkway on the Rainichke Bridge. An official with the ship's company said at the time that swift currents may have been a factor, no one was injured in that incident. More than 200 ships pass through the port of Green Bay each year, transporting more than 2 million tons of cargo. Those ships face their own navigational challenges in Green Bay and the Fox River Shipping Channel. Fox 11's Christian Palacio spoke with the port director and brings us a closer look. While the Great Lakes shipping season opened early last week, ships have yet to arrive in Green Bay. But when they do, ship captains will once again face the narrow Fox River shipping channel that can present its own challenges. You know, the vessels that ply the Great Lakes are, are under the same um, constraints of power and steerage. Uh, you know, we do have um, ample uh, practice and contingency plans uh, with the Waterway Safety Committee. Port Director Dean Hahn says that committee works on what to do in the event of a collision-related incident. He says safety procedures are in place in order to prevent an incident. On the waterway side, uh, the, the bridges are well lit. There are uh, kingpin pile structures in that that are protecting the approaches of the, the bridges to reduce the chance of any type of a, a collision hitting the physical structure of the, of the bridge. In 2017, when the K.E. Barker slammed into the city deck, the issue was a 700-foot ship trying to maneuver through the Main Street Bridge at a tight angle. The ship's owner explained the captain's dilemma at the time. He had to use his bow thruster to, to bring the bow back in line with the, um, you know, with the channel. You know, and this is just one of those one of those spots. That's when it crashed into the city deck. You know, vessels uh, when you just as trains they take a long time to stop. Uh, vessels as well take a long time to stop. In addition to the county addressing waterway ship traffic, the state's Department of Transportation works to maintain all 14,000 bridges in the state, including those over the Fox River. Telling Fox 11, WizDOT's rigorous inspection program allows for routine inspections to assess the condition of bridges throughout the state and ensure each structure is safe for the traveling public. Han points out incidents involving cargo ships are rare and added safeguards are in place to help. And when you have um, uh, saltwater vessels or foreign vessels coming into the system, those are, uh, as, a, as a layer of protection, a pilot will get on board. With the intention of smooth sailing, meteorologist Christian Palacio, Fox 11 News. And so, Dean, if you could just let me know, uh, you know, so roads are rated for various weights of vehicles. Is there a similar measurement for ports, such as how deep they are, how wide they are, et cetera? Yes, so ports just as roads have navigation channels that are maintained to a certain width and depth for those ships to safely uh, navigate through and stay within. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> um, and what type of safety procedures are in place to prevent an incident, um, such as lowering or raising a bridge, uh, stopping, lighting? Say that again, please. Uh, <laughs> what type of safety procedures are in place to prevent an incident. So when we are talking about generally, it doesn't have to be a collision, although of course directly with this story we are talking about a collision, but it could be just as you were talking about the city deck incident. Um, what, are, um, what, what kind of staff are in place? Um, is there, if it's at night, are there lights in place? And is there uh, some sort of activation system? Yeah. So on, on the waterway side, uh, the, the bridges are well lit. There are uh, kingpin pile structures in that that are protecting the approaches of the, the bridges um, to um, reduce the chance of any type of a, a collision hitting the physical structure of the, of the bridge. That that yeah. wooden structure set out in the water would take the impact first should something unfortunately happen. Yeah, and um, of course, uh, you know, we're kind of learning about how in the, in the case of Baltimore right now, the cargo ship, they ran out of power. Um, there's no brakes for the ships. Um, could that potentially ever be something to consider if that were to happen here? Uh, well, you know, vessels, uh, when you just as trains, they take a long time to stop. Uh, vessels as well take a long time to stop. You have so much weight moving in that momentum that it's uh, uh, power is, is how you control steerage. You need power. So when you lose uh, power, you lose steerage and you're somewhat out of control. 
Um, so it's unfortunate what happened in, in Baltimore, but uh, those conditions led to the, the tragic situation. Uh, and you know the vessels that ply the Great Lakes are are under the same um, constraints of power and steerage. Uh, you know we do have um, ample uh, practice and contingency plans uh, with the Waterway Safety Committee, where we're where we have plans on the shelf, so to speak, of what to do in different types of spill or, or collision-related activities, fires, uh, what would happen in a in a marine environment. Uh, locally, so that involves you know DNR, uh, fire department, police departments, uh, Coast Guard, and other um, response agencies. Great, um, and let me see. There's um, and do generally ships know uh, which ports they need to um, head towards to um, to access? Yes, I guess they generally do. Right? right. So understand, like on the Great Lakes, there are Great Lakes um, captains. They're driving vessels around. Uh, they're familiar with the waters. Uh, they're going from U.S. to Canadian ports. Very familiar with with everything within the Great Lakes system. And then when you have um, uh, saltwater vessels or foreign vessels coming into the system, those are uh, as, a, as a layer of protection. A pilot will get on board. A Great Lakes um, pilot will get on board, and, and the captain of that vessel will step aside, and he'll have to take that vessel into. Um, the waters of the Great Lakes and ports of the Great Lakes, in un, you know, unfamiliar uh, waters, so that that, that becomes a, a, a safety measure. And in fact, this uh, vessel in Baltimore would have had a U.S. pilot on board under the, under his command as it was um, getting back to the the ocean. But unfortunately, you know, with the power situations, they had a yeah. tragic situation. Do you think there could be a factor of um, a sort of maintenance on? these kinds of bridges, uh, you know, is there is there a set standard like every decade, every few decades, we have to repaint, we have to reinstall the specific uh, pipes, that type of thing? The roads, yes, the bridges all have maintenance plans and um, uh, recommended, you know, activities to happen at different intervals, but that would be more of a question for the DOT, yeah, uh, okay. their state bridges. That's fair. <laughs> um, all right, am I missing anything, Lloyd? Anything else that you might have had um, that it uh, touch up on? I don't think so. No. Yeah.